Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into one of the most important environmental questions of our time. Why is Antarctica so well protected, while the Amazon rainforest, one of the world's most biodiverse regions, continues to face massive threats? Both of these areas are critical to the planet's health, yet their legal protections are vastly different. So why is that? Let's break it down. Antarctica, this icy, remote and harsh continent, is unlike anywhere else on Earth. But did you know it's actually one of the most well-protected places in the world? That's because of the Antarctic Treaty System, an international agreement that dates back to 1959. This treaty was signed by 12 countries initially and now has 54 signatories, all agreeing that Antarctica is a place for science and peace. There's no military activity allowed, no mining, and no territorial claims beyond scientific research. In a way, it's like the entire continent is a giant nature reserve, free from the pressures of industry or war. So, why is it so easy to protect Antarctica? First off, there are no indigenous populations living there. Unlike other regions, there's no need to balance the rights of native peoples with environmental protection. Plus, the harsh conditions make it difficult for anyone to settle there permanently or exploit its resources. But Antarctica's pristine environment holds immense scientific value from climate research to unique ecosystems, so it's considered a common heritage of humankind. No one owns it, but everyone has a responsibility to protect it. Now let's talk about the Amazon. It's often called the lungs of the planet, but sadly, it doesn't enjoy the same level of protection as Antarctica. Why? Because the Amazon is part of sovereign nations, mainly Brazil. This makes international governance a lot more complicated. Unlike Antarctica, the Amazon faces enormous economic pressures. There's money to be made in logging, agriculture, mining, and cattle ranching. And because the land is valuable for these industries, there's a constant tug of war between conservation and development. On top of that, the Amazon is home to millions of people, including many indigenous communities who depend on the forest for their livelihoods. This means that any attempt to protect the rainforest has to take into account the needs of local populations, which is a much more complex challenge. So, while there is some level of protection, like national parks and indigenous reserves, there's no single international treaty that unites all Amazon countries to protect the forest, like the Antarctic Treaty does for Antarctica. This brings us to the big question. Why isn't there a treaty for the Amazon, like the one for Antarctica? One major reason is that the Amazon is part of several sovereign nations. Countries like Brazil, Peru, and Colombia have legal control over their portions of the rainforest, which makes international agreements difficult. They're often reluctant to give up that control, especially when there are economic benefits from exploiting the land. In contrast, Antarctica doesn't belong to any one nation, so it was easier for countries to agree to protect it as a global commons. Another issue is that the Amazon's economic value is immediate, whether it's logging, agriculture, or mining. The benefits of protecting the rainforest for climate stability and biodiversity are long-term and harder to quantify. But should we be treating the Amazon more like Antarctica? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. While the situations in Antarctica and the Amazon are very different, there are still lessons we can learn. One of the key ideas from Antarctica is the principle of common heritage. The idea that some places are too important for just one country to own and exploit. If the world started to view the Amazon in this way, as a global resource that we all have a responsibility to protect,
we could see more international cooperation. Imagine if we had a stronger, more comprehensive international agreement, like the Antarctic Treaty focused on conserving the Amazon. Another lesson is the emphasis on scientific research. Just as Antarctica is protected for its role in climate science, we could strengthen protection for the Amazon by highlighting its critical role in biodiversity and regulating the planet's climate. So, what can be done? First, we need stronger international cooperation. Countries need to come together and recognize the global importance of the Amazon, just like they have for Antarctica. We also need to focus on sustainable development. Indigenous and local communities depend on the Amazon for their livelihoods, and any conservation efforts need to balance environmental protection with human needs. Protecting the Amazon doesn't mean stopping all development. It means finding ways to do it sustainably. And this is where you come in. The more people who are aware of the challenges the Amazon faces, the more pressure there will be for real change. So, if you want to help protect the Amazon, make sure to stay informed, support conservation organizations, and use your voice to advocate for change. In conclusion, while Antarctica enjoys a high level of protection, thanks to the Antarctic Treaty, the Amazon continues to face threats from deforestation, climate change, and economic pressures. But by applying some of the lessons from Antarctica, like international cooperation and a common heritage approach, we can work toward a future where both the Amazon and its communities are protected. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and leave a comment below with your thoughts. Let's keep this conversation going.